Hey everybody, I'm JJ Johnson. You're watching the American Prepping Academy. Today we're going to talk about the Home Security and Defense 101. So this is going to uh, basically be taking into consideration some ideas and some things to think about when laying about a suburban homestead. So if you live in the suburbs, you live in a neighborhood, stuff like that, the whole point of this video is to be able to give you ideas to think about to lay your home out in a manner that is more defensible. So should there ever be an SHTF type situation or some kind of a situation where you have to defend your home against somebody who's trying to, to come in and attack you, it'll give you some more options to not just be shooting from your window um, and just some more layers of security as a whole. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, take a look here. So as far as the overview goes, we're going to talk a little bit about a vulnerability assessment, what that is, and kind of some of the things you need to be asking yourself when you're doing a vulnerability assessment. And this needs to be done first. Uh, okay, next thing is we're going to talk about the four Ds of home defense. We're also going to look at some exterior landscape options that can be useful. We'll also take a look at security systems, uh, exterior lighting, hardening of doors and windows, guard dogs, a few miscellaneous security items, and kind of an overhead diagram that hopefully will help bring all these things together um, just in case you're having a hard time picturing what it is that I'm talking about. Okay, so as far as the home vulnerability assessment goes, uh, to conduct a home vulnerability assessment, what you need to do is look at your home through the eyes of a criminal or through the mind of a criminal. If you, you need to say to yourself, if I was going to break into my house, where would I do it? When would I do it? How would I do it? Uh, which door would you use to break in? What lighting do you have present? Um, is a security system or signs uh, visible? Are there dogs or beware of dog signs? Uh, where are the blind spots out of the windows? Where are the places that you can approach the property without being seen? What can you tell about the home from the outside? Can a criminal hide near the doors? Can they approach from the home unseen? Uh, what information can be gathered from the vehicles that are out in the driveways? And is there a shed in the backyard and is it locked? These are just some of the kinds of things that you want to think about as you're going through and conducting a vulnerability assessment. What you want to do is you want to take a look at your property and you want to start taking some notes, writing down the things that you think you could improve upon. And then you know, using the ideas and suggestions that I give you here, you can come up with a plan to make your home a lot more tough and, and a hard target. And that's really the whole idea uh, behind this effort. Uh, the four D's of home defense, we're talking about detour, detect, delay, and defend. And, you know, ideally, the, the whole point of all these things is, is that you want your home to be, to appear to be harder target than your neighbors. Uh, the criminal should look at your home and immediately decide that other homes have a higher probability of success. So that's the idea of deterrence. There are multiple factors that we get, or multiple things that can be a deterrent to criminals, and we'll go through a lot of these uh, throughout this video. So detect. Uh, we're talking about lighting, surveillance cameras, and fences to help you detect a criminal's presence by illuminating them on their approach, recording them while they're on your property, and funneling them to one opening so that you know where they're going to be approaching your home from. Um, next thing is delay. Um, fencing can do this. You know, landscape features such as bushes as well as hardened doors and windows are going to help to delay criminals' entry into the home if they decide to go ahead and, and make an attempt to break in. And lastly, defend. This is the last element. Should all other options fail, then you may have to resort to defending your home with violence. And you want to be able to do so safely. And so that's why you want to incorporate some of the things that we'll talk about later in this lesson. Okay, exterior landscape. The first one, the first section, uh, subsection within this part is walls. In many countries around the world, stone or masonry walls are commonly used as a perimeter barrier. These offer excellent ballistic protection and are an excellent deterrent. It's not so common here in the United States because of cost, but they do happen, they can happen, and you can do them. And you may not have to do something as big as the one that we have here on the video, but even partial walls um, or you know, perhaps walls you know, that just 
uh, are in a corner section, you know, where the fence attaches to each end or something along those lines, those can be uh, equally as helpful too. So it really kind of depends. Um, here's a different kind of wall. It's more of a concrete wall. As you can see, it's just got the concrete on one side of the property, and then they've got wrought iron, you know, back here. Um, again, it, it really depends on what your budget can afford, but you should consider walls as an option. Uh, an interesting thing that I've seen overseas uh, many times is these types of walls where they take and they embed glass into the top of the wall. I think it's primarily for birds in most situations, but this is also a huge deterrent to keep people from, from crossing the walls. If you were going to do this here in the States, you'd probably want to make some efforts to make it really cool looking um, because, yeah, it's, it's not as common here, but something to think about. Maybe at a bug out uh, location or bug out retreat uh, might be a little bit more doable. Okay, um, another kind of wall that can be helpful from uh, a defense position or an offense position is a retaining wall. Uh, having retaining walls that come out to the side of the house like this is a great option. Let's say somebody is coming in your front door right here, then you can come out your side door and have a nice little um, uh, clear shooting lane at them, you know, if that was what was needed. Uh, and you're still relatively, you know, behind cover and hidden. So um, same thing over here. If somebody had came into your yard or something along those lines, you may be able to get down, get behind cover, you know, somewhere, somewhere like that. So these are all interesting features that can be uh, quite useful. Okay, so uh, exterior landscape, let's talk a little bit about masonry planter boxes. These offer a twofold advantage. First, they are a great place to grow herbs and vegetables. And second, they offer excellent ballistic protection and places of cover. Now, they don't have to be super uh, extravagant. This one's basically made of bricks. That's going to still provide good cover, although it's a little bit lower than what you would like. Uh, you could make it a little bit bigger than that, and that's going to work just fine. Here's a little bit better example over here. It's a little bit taller and um, you know this is going to be a great little planter box but it's also going to provide great ballistic protection. You can locate these at strategic locations on your property uh, based off of the shooting lanes and shooting you know um, areas that you have on different ways where people would approach your property and different things like that. Again this is a generality we're talking about generalities here, so we can't apply this to you know every certain every situation. So here's a little bit uh, uh, more intricate one, and uh, they can, as you can see, they can be very decorative. They look like they're just part of the landscape. Uh, they are pretty expensive, but you can you can do them uh, fairly reasonably priced these days. You know, uh, with one like this, this is uh, likely a concrete structure that was poured in. You can make the forms, pour the concrete yourself, and then just a veneer of the decorative rock on the outside. Same thing goes with this one here. Um, you know, and you can actually put trees and stuff like that in them too. So it's a pretty cool option to think about. Here's one that's a little bit more common. Uh, again, you know, going to be able to provide pretty good concealment as well as cover uh, and ballistic protection. You know, and you can you can buy these. Um, bricks yourself at you know Home Depot, Lowe's, Menards, those kinds of places and and be able to construct some pretty basic uh, shapes you know just on your property. Okay exterior landscape fences these are a lot more common than walls here in America and more cost-effective however they generally provide less ballistic protection uh, but they are still excellent deterrent and they do help to funnel people to a single opening you know say perhaps at the front of your home. Now this is a regular um, a regular privacy fence, just a wooden privacy fence. And I've, I've drawn in this little section here because I wanted to talk to you guys about something that you can do during increased times of security when you don't want people hopping your fence. You probably wouldn't want to leave this out all the time, but it's something that you can do. Uh, you can take a two by four and you can drill holes you know, through it every four or five inches or something along those lines and then you can get these big spikes you know they make them anywhere from five inches to eight or ten inches you know something along those lines and if you just make the holes just slightly smaller than the nail and uh, you know pound those through so that the sharp end is pointing up and then you can just take and pre-drill a couple of uh, you know lag hold uh, excuse me lag screw holes 
and then just zip them into your wooden fence posts you know all the way across your backyard then you can take these things throw them up in the attic or somewhere in the garage or whatever the case may be um, you know or maybe in an old shed or something when you don't need them and and then you can just pull them up when you need them you could probably even turn it upside down and just stick it in the in the dirt right here um, you know until it's until it's needed so something to think about just to improve the uh, inaccessibility of a backyard so that you don't have to worry about that as much all right so here's some other types of fence some these are some things that you might more commonly see in a front yard um, if you're going to do a small fence in your front yard which I think is is beneficial uh, having small balusters or things stick up like that are going to make it just a little bit harder for people to cross as opposed to doing a smooth top rail like that that's easier to jump so uh, something to think about there as well uh, again, these are not really providing any significant ballistic protection, but they are just a little bit of a deterrent. And they do just send kind of a signal to people, hey, I don't want you in my yard. And those signals uh, in a law-abiding society actually mean more than you would think. Uh, even though we're talking about times of potential lawlessness, it, it's still a mental thing that people put into their head. So wrought iron fences are quite expensive, but they are very good options uh, for keeping people out, especially if they're, you know, topped with uh, sharp little ends like this. And um, the, there's some pros and cons here. Again, they don't give as much ballistic protection, um, but they do offer you increased sight lines and being able to see where if you are... Uh, if you have a privacy fence like this, then you can't really see very far past that. You can't see what's going on outside of your yard. So there's there's pros and cons either way to the different styles of fence that are out there. Now, chain link fence is another option. Uh, you know, not so good in most yards, but hey, they are alligator proof, so that's a bonus. <laughs> All right, so security systems. Let's talk about security systems here. They are designed to help you detect criminals entering your property or your home. These systems will typically include sensors on the doors and windows, as well as motion detectors inside the home and uh, security cameras on the outside of the home. Security cameras are typically located at the entryways, but they can also be located at each corner of the home to increase the field of view. Uh, monitored security systems are connected to the security company, and when a sensor goes off when the alarm is set, they'll notify the police if you do not reset the system or answer the phone within a specified amount of time. Security systems are a huge deterrent for most criminals, and they are a way, uh, and if they are equipped with a camera, they can also be a force multiplier in an SHTF situation. The reason I say that is because you can monitor more than just one field of view for what's going on around your house or your wife can monitor those fields of view while you are dealing with a security situation. If you've got radios, you could talk together, you know, those kinds of things. So they can be a force multiplier if they're set up correctly. All right, so the traditional types of security systems that you're going to see out there, um, you know, a lot of them like ADT and um, stuff like that are going to have to be wired in by a professional installer. They do sell uh, Simply Safe uh, as, a, as a brand. I'm not necessarily a fan of the company itself because they're not necessarily pro-gun, but their systems are pretty easy to install. They're all wireless, and uh, you own the system. So there are some advantages to these. This is a controllable, controllable uh, CCTV camera head, and you know if you mount one of these at the corner of the house, you can see a large field of view and so you know if they're mounted properly and have the right size arm and everything you might be able to get away with only having two of these on your home and be able to see the full you know the full perimeter of your house so that's kind of cool they also have options like this that are wireless options uh, they basically just need a power source uh, brought to them and then they'll wirelessly uh, send the signal into a recorder or to um, you know, hooked to the internet. There's some that are like that. It just depends on which type you get. This is a kind of a more traditional style that is hardwired into a DVR, um, and then you can you know have a monitor associated with that to check uh, as well. So uh, several different options out there. Whether or not you decide to actually get a security system, you should definitely have a security system sign in your house. These are a huge deterrent to criminals because by and large, when criminals are casing, they're lazy. 
They're not getting out of their cars. They're just driving by seeing what they can see. And if they see a ADT sign or a security system sign or something like that on your property, they're probably just going to go right past you. So uh, these are worth the, worth the investment. Uh, a few bucks. You can get them off eBay. And I think you have also get them off of Amazon, um, some uh, real and or old and or fake <laughs> um, security system signs. So check into those. Okay, so these are manual security systems. These are something that are pretty cool. These are basically just little alarms. They're two-piece alarms where you have, um, you know, the main body with the speaker and the battery and then a, a little magnetic unit. And when the two are broken, when the door is opened, a little alarm will go off. Uh, if you can't afford a full-blown security system or if you just don't like them, you don't want them, these are a great thing to have on just a, an entry, you know, the, at your entry points. Um, you know, you can turn them off and on at different times, but when you go to bed, you can turn them on, and that way if a yeah, door opens when you're sleeping or whatever, it's going to sound an alarm that's going to help alert your dog or whatever the case may be or and or you or your family. So uh, something to think about here. These can be uh, purchased off of Amazon for $20 to $30 depending on which ones you get. So that's pretty cool. We can also go old school. Uh, these actually work quite well, believe it or not. Um, I think that this style probably works a little better than this style over here. Um, I have also used just a little L bracket and just hung a bell just at the edge of the door so that whenever the door comes open, it tips the bell and um, that works pretty good too. So, you know, whatever you want, but just putting something that uh, jingles or whatever on your door, or just a bell kind of thing is going to work out pretty darn good. Okay, uh, driveway alarms. This is a, uh, another part, another aspect to security systems. There are two primary uh, driveway alarm systems that I've seen. There are two primary types, let's put it this way. The type one is a magnetic uh, interference type where you've got this bar here that detects magnetic fluctuations around it. And so when a car drives by, it's going to send a signal to this inside of your house up to 400 feet away, and it's going to let you know that, hey, something just came by with a lot of metal. <laughs> um, don't know for sure if these will work with the rifles. Uh, I have not tested them out. I just bought one of these, and I'll be installing one in my property here pretty soon, so I'll let you know. Um, this is also the guard line. These are more of a passive infrared system. I have one of these also. These work fine, but you do occasionally get some uh, false positives. But they are pretty sensitive and they do pretty they do work fairly well. The cool part about these is you can have multiple alarms set to different tones so that you, you know, if you have multiple points of egress into your property, you can have multiple alarms to let you know what's going on at those entries. Definitely worth the time and value there. I think they're right around $75 to $100. Okay, so exterior lighting. Exterior lighting is an excellent deterrent, and it also is going to help you positively identify your target. Should you have to defend your property, uh, you should consider three types of lighting. Lighting that shines outwards, lighting that shines towards your home, and lighting, lighting along the ground. So lighting that shines towards your home is going to look like this. If you notice, the yard is not very illuminated. That's because all the light is pointing back up to the walls of the house. The reason that this is important from a security standpoint is because if somebody is walking along the edge of your home, it's going to highlight them and uh, it's a little easier to see movement that way. So that is helpful. Okay, this is lighting that is shining outwards. So we've got, you know, floodlights, your typical kind of floods, floodlights. They also have uh, solar and motion activated ones. Those are great as well. I've got some of those on my home. Um, but you, as you can see, the light is shining out here and it's shining, it is illuminating your yard. And that is what you want uh, because that's gonna make it a whole lot easier to see the target and who they are and if it looks like you know they're up to no good or not. All right, we also want to have some lighting along the ground. The reason for this is it's going to just help bring illumination to the area. You can also use these as yard markers if you put them, say, every 5 or 10 yards or whatever the case may be, going out your driveway or along paths, and that's going to help you get an accurate distance. Um, and it's also going to just you know add ambient light. And, and, and for your footing, if you have to move around your yard, you'll be able to see uh, better as well. 
and in an emergency you can use these you know types of solar uh, landscape lights uh, inside your home as well all right so hardening doors and windows doors and windows are entry points for criminals so special attention should be made to making them more difficult to get into you can do this by using steel exterior doors and door jams and by adding ballistic window film on ground level windows all right deadbolts deadbolts are a real easy way to make uh, doors a lot more difficult to get into and I highly recommend having at least one deadbolt on all exterior doors Another thing that you can do is get door armor. Now there's a couple of companies that I'm aware of that both are pretty good. Uh, I'm an affiliate with one which is uh, Armor Concepts and um, I'll put a uh, discount code down below. I think it's AF Reality 15 if I remember correctly and uh, that'll give you that'll save you 15% off of their uh, products. Now this is a steel door jam that goes right here and depending on the height on where your um, deadbolt and latches are then you can knock those out. Um, it's also got hinge shields on it and also a little cup around the door and these things are very difficult. They make a door very difficult to break through. Even wooden doors, uh, you know, with this on there, are, are a lot harder to do. The other company is Door Devil. I've never used one of these products, but they're basically the same thing. And uh, again, they just make doors a lot more uh, difficult to kick in. Okay, uh, the next thing here is uh, ballistic window film. Now, you know, there's there is actually ballistic window film that will stop bullets. Um, but that's probably going to be out of the, the cost range for most people. So hurricane film is probably going to be a better option. And uh, basically that's just going to make the, the windows more difficult to shatter. Uh, not going to be able to break in so easy. And they're gonna, they're, it's going to cause them to make more noise and all that kind of stuff. So uh, that is probably the option that most people would go with. Okay, so here's some other low-tech stuff that actually works pretty well. Um, these here um, little little poles that go up underneath the door, um, you can adjust them to the right height and they make a door pretty difficult to kick in. You've also got some bars uh, that you can adjust for French doors as well. It's going to make them a little harder or just your, your standard steel bar that's going to come across the back of your door. And then if you've got sliding glass doors, just take a little dowel rod, fit it you know, in between here, and slide that in. That's going to make a sliding glass door a lot more difficult to open as well. So lots of different options there. OK. So the next thing is bars on your windows. Um, most people are not going to want to put bars on their windows because they look terrible <laughs> and but they do increase your security by a lot so you know if you didn't if you didn't want to put them on your primary home maybe it would be something to think about on your bug out location um, or the option the other option exists of getting something on the inside of your windows that could largely be left you know uh, completely closed and pushed away during normal times and then you could you know uh, pull them out when it came to be like high security times when you were you know worried about security at a, a little bit higher level okay let's talk about guard dogs guard dogs are an excellent deterrent and if uh, trained properly they can also assist in the defend element of your home uh, for maximum benefit you should have guard dogs who stay outside 100 percent of the time and dogs who also sleep inside the home as well uh, make sure that you get proper training. This is highly recommended um, in both situations. Now, I know a lot of people are very sensitive about dogs and they're like, hey, don't leave your dog sleeping outside. But trust me, dogs really don't care, especially if that's all they ever know. Um, lots of us grew up with dogs who sleep outside all the time. And, um, you know, they, they, don't, they don't have any, any problem with it. They're, they're built to do that. But definitely in height, times of heightened security, having two sets of dogs, one that stays on the inside and one that stays on the outside, is going to increase your security significantly. 
All right, so here's here's just a few slides, a few pictures of some good guard dogs. Uh, some of the basic features that you want in uh, guard dogs is that you want them to be larger dogs so that they're more intimidating. You also want them to be fiercely loyal and territorial. The problem with some of these kinds of dogs is that they can be aggressive towards other animals, so they may not work best on homestead kinds of, of places. Um, there are some other dogs that might be a little bit better in that regard, like Anatolian Shepherds, um, you know, and, and some of the, the, the herd type dogs. Anyway, so we've got uh, a German Shepherd, although they were originally uh, bred for guarding <laughs> Uh, herds they really that I, I believe that's been bred out of them for the most part they're really territorial and in my experience I've owned a few and they don't do well with other animals uh, then we've got a bull mastiff uh, here Rottweilers uh, giant snouser um, Doberman pincer Akita and boxer again just a few suggestions there's literally hundreds of different kinds of dogs that are going to do great so if yours is not on here i'm not trying to insult your dog it's just these are just some some potential options now whether or not you decide that you want to own a guard dog you should have a dog sign kind of like the security system sign um, just because they don't see the dog when they see that sign a lot of times criminals are going to just go somewhere else because they don't want to deal with it all right, so this is the miscellaneous section here. This section is going to cover some of the additional items that could also be useful that may not fit neatly in other categories. Okay, let's talk about your garage door opener in your vehicle. Is your garage door opener on your visor where it can be seen if somebody looks in your vehicle? If so, you need to move that. Move it inside your glove box, move it inside the uh, center console or something like that where it can't be seen from the outside because all a criminal has to do is smash that side window on either side, grab it, click open your garage, walk in your garage, close the door, boom, now they're inside. They have all the time they need to get in to the door that goes into your house from there. Um, and you've probably got a bunch of tools laying around that they can use. So this is a real easy way for criminals to get access to homes. Make sure that you don't make that mistake. All right. Uh, in times of heightened security, you might need a baby monitor. <laughs> Now, a lot of people are going to probably be like, what are you talking about, JJ? Uh, the thing is, is that baby monitors make great, when they're audio video baby monitors, they make a great little security device. You can take and put the camera portion uh, facing towards the entry point in your home. So let's say it's the front door, if that's the one that you're most worried about. Then you take the receiver and you put that up next to your bed. If there's any loud crashes, you can look and see what's going on at your front door. You can put another one on your back door. Uh, just make sure that you don't get the two receivers mixed up. You have them clearly labeled or something like that if need be. Uh, but these are a great little way during heightened security to be able to keep an eye on your doors you know, while you're sleeping and that kind of thing. Okay, uh, key fob. So as far as your key fob, you want to leave this on your nightstand where you have easy access to it. That way if you hear somebody making noise or banging on your door or trying to break in or whatever, you can set off the emergency alarm on your, on your car and um, a lot of times that's going to scare them away. So they're just going to take off running because they don't want the attention. Okay, the next thing is make sure you have a super bright flashlight somewhere right there by your night excuse me, by your nightstand. And, uh, you know, sometimes just shining those out the window and showing people that you're awake is going to be enough that you don't have to, that they're going to run off. Um, additionally, a loud air horn or sports horn or a loud whistle can also be a good deterrent. Um, <laughs> you know, obviously firearms are a part of home security, but sometimes they don't necessarily have to be. You might be able to just scare people off. Okay, the next thing here is using timers, using light timers to make your home look like it's occupied. And the reason you want to do this is so that if somebody, if somebody is trying to determine a pattern of life for you, um, then you know you want to you want to make make things 
a little bit more difficult for them. So if you're going to go out somewhere, then you can use this old analog style or a digital style, either one, and you can have the lights come on and off in different rooms at different times. Now what I recommend doing is having multiple of these timers in different levels and different floors so that when one light goes off downstairs, another minute or two later, another light comes on and it makes it look like you've just went from downstairs to upstairs or whatever the case may be. So just think about that a little bit. Okay, so trying to kind of put this all together, I wanted to show you guys this, this little diagram right here. So basically what we have here, I apologize for the, the heading not being exactly right, but my recording setup, I couldn't get it matched up perfectly, but I think you'll get the point here. So this is a diagram of just say a house in a, um, in a regular neighborhood. And when we start talking about uh, the four D's, you know, we want to take a look at privacy fence or, or fencing, you know, uh, in general, all the way around the home. That's going to be a deterrent. It's also going to delay and funnel, um, you know, somebody into a single point in your, in your driveway. And that's going to be a good thing. The next thing is lighting. You want to have some floodlights. You want to have that, that lighting that's shining out so that you can see. You want to also have some lighting shining up on your home like we talked about. And um, if you can, uh, if you can have all the lights wired into a single switch, that's great. Although you would probably have to be building a new home to get that done at a, at a, at a reasonable cost. Um, but be just being able to turn all those lights on fairly quickly and easily is, is, uh, is a good thing. All right, the next thing here is landscape lights. Just having those maybe around your shed, around your deck, and around the uh, entryways, stuff like that, kind of the key areas. And like I said, those can also be used for measuring distance if you have a bigger property or a more rural property. All right, so the next thing here is planter boxes. Now, again, these are great for ballistic protection. As you can see, these don't have to be everywhere. Uh, and you could have certainly have less or more depending on what your budget is and that kind of thing. But uh, these will, uh, if laid out properly, are going to give you multiple options. Now, I like the idea of having some around the perimeter and then some a little bit closer to the house as well. So that gives you kind of, you know, if you needed to uh, engage someone, then you can start out a little bit further and then work your way back to the house if you needed to. Uh, again, just, just some ideas and some thoughts. Uh, again, it's going to depend on the shape of your property, how it's laid out, homeowners association regulations, and all those kinds of things. Next thing was a driveway alarm, just making sure that you've got that opening uh, alarmed so that if somebody does walk onto your property, then you're going to know about it. All right, the next thing here is uh, surveillance cameras. You want to make sure you got them at the entry points. Um, and as well on the corners of the home if possible. And you might even want to throw one out on the shed if you, you know, kind of looking back towards your home if you had that option. And then guard dogs. Of course, you got to have guard dogs. All right, and the last thing here is uh, thorny shrubs and bushes. Uh, we didn't talk about those a whole lot in this, in this um, presentation, but the thorny shrubs can be used to fill the gaps uh, along the perimeter to keep people from being able to jump the fence quite so easily. And they can also be used as food, you know, if you're in an area that can grow berries and those kinds of things like blackberries or whatever, then that's going to uh, be potentially good. And then, you know, right along the uh, exterior of your home as well, having some, some thorny shrubs in those areas to keep people from hiding out in those areas could also be good. Okay, so that is the basics of kind of home defense, uh, home security and defense 101. Uh, these are just some, some big things that you can think about that are going to help uh, make your home a little bit more defensible. Um, you know, not suggesting anybody's going to do all these things all at once, but maybe you could, you know, start where the biggest vulnerabilities are for your property after you do the vulnerability assessment and then work your way down the list. 
so we talked about vulnerability assessment, talked about the four Ds of home defense, the exterior landscape options, security systems, exterior lighting, hardening of doors and windows, guard dogs, a few miscellaneous items, and then we took a look at that diagram that kind of lays everything all out. So I hope that this was helpful, guys. If you have any questions or any comments, then please go ahead and shoot me an email or put them in the comments section, and I'll do my best to answer them. So uh, thanks for watching. We'll try to get more details into this uh, you know, as we go further down uh, into it as time goes on. And um, probably the next lesson in this regard is going to be uh, getting a little bit more specific, thinking about how do you use a firearm in your home safely and um, what are the things that you need to think about for engaging somebody with a firearm on your property and in your home and all those kinds of things. So. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to live the six Ps. Proper prior preparation prevents poor performance. Stay safe, guys.